For instance. For instance, um, we've got two amps that look identical, really, almost. So this is a 65 reissue Princeton Reverb. This is kind of your standard uh, reissue black face fender. And then this is a 1964 custom hand-wired Princeton. So the difference between the two is actually way more than it looks like. But uh, even though they share the same controls, the circuit is slightly different, the components are different, and I think you'll see that they react quite a bit different as well to how you play, uh, how the knobs work, everything else. So price is quite a bit different too. So I guess you'll have to decide on, on that. So I guess the main thing we're testing out today is hand-wired versus non-hand-wired, right? Yeah, yeah. This is Fender's hand-wired version of this amplifier. The speakers are different, um, but beyond that, I mean, they are very much Princeton's. And, and both of them share the same tube complement, you know, same power, same control layout, everything. So for someone who doesn't know about hand-wired versus non-hand-wired, what, what's the difference mainly? Like what, what are you getting in a non-hand-wired amp and what are you getting in a hand-wired amp? Well, a properly non-hand-wired amp is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with them. They, I mean, it's, you design a circuit and if you can lay it out on a PC board, uh, on some kind of circuit board, you can replicate that over and over and over without any questions, right? The beauty of hand-wired stuff, it's easy to work on. It's hard to break. Um, it looks super cool, but tonally, I don't know that you're gonna get any like huge win just because something's hand-wired. These two particular amps do sound quite a bit different, but I think there's more afoot than just the hand-wired aspect of it. I uh, won't be able to see the circuit without pulling the chassis out, yeah. which we can do. That's beautiful. Wow. I do love looking at those <laughs> hand-wired amps. It's so cool. I mean, even if there was no difference other than that, just for the sheer fact of just craftsmanship, that's impressive. It's really pretty. Gorgeous, gorgeous work. Okay, so I have to interrupt the video here because something cool happened. Yesterday when we were at Righteous Guitars shooting this video, I posted a story on my Instagram showing the guts of the two amps and I got a reply from a subscriber here on the channel, Robert Pierce. Now, Robert has been subscribed to this channel for a really long time. He's a good friend of the channel and he actually works at Fender in California building amps and he, uh, he actually built that amp. He made the amp, he wired the amp that we're using in this video. I thought that was super cool. So I'll have his Instagram link down below. You guys can go uh, give him a shout out and you're about to hear his handiwork. All right, let's check out the other one. All right, so what's going on here? Well, first off, I'm blown away. That, to me, this is beautiful. For a guitar geek, that's a gorgeous job they did wiring that up. Uh, this is great too, you know? But what you're seeing here is, if you look at the actual components, right, you can see this, like this cap, it's directly wired to a turret that's joining it to its next component. So each of these are joined together by a hard wired solder point, right? Every wire is soldered directly to the next piece. All the potentiometers right here, let's say you drop your amp, right, and then you bang one of your pots. This isn't attached to any kind of circuit board to break or damage, as opposed to Let's say you drop this or bang into it. These potentiometers are wired directly to this board. You may damage that board, which means that needs to be replaced as opposed to just going to your local shop and grabbing the part and putting it in there. You'll notice here, this is still a clean design, but it's traced out on the back. So there's a, it's more of a, a board. So it'll look kind of more like this. And they're joining things together with these clips. Instead of actually hand soldering it, they just have a little, little guy that they can dip in a solder bath and then come back through and plug them in. This is not a bad looking amplifier. And as a matter of fact, this is a really good amp, but they do share a lot of similarities. They're clearly not the same type of components though. These caps, yeah, they're very similar, but if you start looking at the rest of it, where they've kind of just used more, you know, out of the box type of stuff, over there they clearly spent some money, you know, using branded 
nicer versions of a lot of those parts. So overall, that's just a much cleaner look to me. I mean, look at this. Like, is that functional? Yeah, it's functional. The one over here though, while it's the same thing, look how tight and clean it is. That's a stupid detail, but it makes a difference. There was more attention paid to that amp at the final assembly than there was to this amplifier. <sighs> Do you have a different speaker? There's an El Nico speaker in the hand wire and there's a ceramic, you know? So we will need to, yeah, we'll, we'll need to run them through the same speaker. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me what you thought because I don't okay. want any confirmation bias. <laughs> okay, good. So what I'll do, we'll, we'll shoot them out in there. Yes. And then you and I will get together and compare notes and see if we thought the same things. How does that Great. sound? Great, sounds All right. perfect. <laughs> All right, so, so I should point out that uh, we did just pull the chassis out of both of these amps. Don't do that at home. Uh, Amplifiers and amp circuits are crazy dangerous. The capacitors inside both of those amps can hold enough charge to really, really do some damage. So, uh, you know, I would not recommend cracking your amp open at home and taking a look at it. Just uh, use your imagination or watch, watch this video again if you want to know more about it. So we're putting these back in the, uh, the cabinets. We just noticed that this is the hand-wired one. That's the non-hand-wired. They're the same part number. Same transformers. Which is really cool. Yeah. So, bold move. Right. We'll see, uh, we'll see what, what impact that has. And the same tubes. Same tubes, yeah. Yeah. So, same tubes, same transformers. It really does come down to the circuit wiring and the speakers and the cabinets. But we're going we're gonna to play them through both speakers so we can compare them direct head to head. So, we're trying to isolate just this. What you got going on here? I'm putting together a little uh, little thing so we can jump those speakers. Okay, so we're gonna shoot these two out. I'm playing my Strat, which conveniently was already here because I have the guys at right just pluck it for me. Uh, and we're gonna start with the non-hand-wired normal off-the-shelf Princeton. And we're gonna start with both amp on five. So this is volume five, treble five, bass five, and we're gonna compare the two flat line. Then we'll get into swapping speakers and seeing how close we can get them, if at all. I think there's gonna be quite a bit of difference here, especially in the reverb and the tremolo sounds, but uh, let's see how it does. <laughs> the two roughly based on the same control settings and now I'm going to dial in a sound that I really like on the hand wired one and see if I can match it with the non hand wired one and then once we're done with that I'm going to go and play them through the same speaker. So right now I've got a sound pulled up that I like. This is probably how I would run this amp normally.
Sounds good. It's edge of breakup, so if you dig in, it'll it'll break up even more. So now let's see if I can get close with the That's a lot more mid-scooped to me, the non-hand-wired version. This has a nice mid-range presence that I'm really digging. Overall, to me, this one sounds far superior in the room, but that very well could be because of the speaker. So next what we're gonna do is take this speaker cable that Ben just made, and we're gonna patch that amp into that cabinet. <laughs> speaker sounds best. I think I by far and away. I 100% agree. This amp sounds quite a bit better than that amp in every respect. The reverb sounds better, the tremolo sounds better, it breaks up better. The mid-range content is... But you could gig with this amp in a small gig. That would yep. be tough. This would be tough. Um, this amp sounds good. I think so too. But it's got a mid-scoop thing and it's too bright. It's very harsh in the top end. Yeah, it's really bright. It's really bright. Especially really bright. with a strap, it's, it's too well, and that's, bright. Like we talk talk about like in a band environment, because of the mid-range content of that, you'll be able to hear it through the mix. That's gonna go away. Yep. To me, you're just gonna get lost. Right. Yeah. But that amp with that speaker and cabinet. Big improvement. Big improvement. Mm -hmm. like big improvement. A lot of the mid-range came back, yep. tamed a lot of the high end. Mm -hmm. You got a little bit more of that low end punch that this amp naturally has. I don't think it was as good as the hand wired, but it was much closer. I felt like it's still pretty bright, but it regained some of the, it wasn't scooped anymore. Yep. So still, I still felt like it was brighter than this amp overall. Yep. And it wasn't as mid-range as that, but man, if you have a Princeton and you want to, a 65 and you want to improve it like instantly, go buy an on Eco 10 and put it in there. Yeah. Boom. That's a, that's a huge improvement. Massive improvement. And what's the price difference between these two? $1,300. That's $1,300 You can buy more. two of those for the price of one of these. Yeah, it's a substantial part. Now, granted, USA made hand wired in, in Corona, California. Those are made over right across in Ensenada. Yeah. Um, ceramic speaker, Alnico speaker, circuit board, you know, hand wired, like I've already said. But yeah, it's, it's a substantial amount more money, since so you're not. Well, I think it depends on what type of gigs you're doing. If you're just going down once a week to your local bar. Why wouldn't you use that? Yeah, why wouldn't you use yeah. that? 
If you're traveling though, and it, it's going in and out of trailers, it's going in and out of cases, it's getting moved around by roadies and stagehands, that one all day, every day. Because it's worth the extra for it's, that, yeah. That is worth the extra money because it's easily serviceable. It's, it's less likely to have any kind of catastrophic failure when the amp is dropped or kicked around, not if. Well, so for example, when we went to the speaker, swap out and soldered that real quick thing together real fast like that. That's how fast you could replace a potentiometer in this amp. Right. It's not going to go like that with this amp. Right. So yeah, you're absolutely right. On the road, serviceability, that's, even just in general. A hobbyist could service this amp. Yeah. Does hand wired make a difference? Kind of. <laughs> I mean, less on the audio though than you would, like less yeah. on the sonic side, right? Yeah. It's more about reliability and uh, serviceability. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and it looks cool. If and you ever take the chassis out, <laughs> you know, it, is cool. it looks really cool. Awesome. Uh, you know what? Here is a very valid thing. If you wanted to make that amp your own, right? This is a very easy amp for your tinkerer to get in there and change values of things and modify the crap out of it. That is not. Mm -hmm. So that, that's actually a super valid point. You could make this amp scream, you could make it do all kinds of different stuff. And because of the way it's laid out, those parts, are, I mean, it's, you can see it. Right. You could easily learn it. If you take something like a champ, like this simple, simple circuit, you can kind of figure out how everything works and what you can change to modify the amount of gain or how the tone stack works put a Marshall tone stack in it. So there is that side of it. If you're a, a tweaker and you really want to make it your own, then there's no question that hand wire is for way sure the way to go. Not yeah. everybody's that. I'm, I'm totally kind of that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Can't see my face, but I'm good. <laughs> so hand wired versus non hand wired. It's an interesting comparison. It's one that I've been wanting to do for a really long time. And I thought the results were actually a lot different than I thought they would be. But let me know what you think down in the comment section below this video. Which amp did you prefer? And did you think that there's a $1,200 price difference between those two amplifiers? If you wanna support the channel, check out the links in the description box down below. You can sign up for the green room down there. We now have two levels of support for the green room. And you can check out my video courses down below as well. I'll also have affiliate links to the gear we used in these videos and these two amps. So if you want to check them out down below, you can get more information on those. Those are affiliate links. So if you buy something through that, I earn a small commission, which really helps me out in making these videos. Anyways, that's going to do it for today's video. Thanks for watching. My name is Rhett Scholl, and remember, there is no plan B.